Stylistically and thematically, LEGO's 2005 Vikings theme is a theme like no other. LEGO designers really ask themselves what happens if you take LEGO System, LEGO Bionicle, and LEGO Technic elements and combine them under a theme which has never been produced before by the LEGO group. Well, you get something quite memorable, and that's this theme here. Over the course of two years, Vikings would give us seven sets, along with some other gear and miscellaneous items. And even today, there really is nothing like any of these sets. So hey, let's take a closer look. When it comes to medieval themes, Vikings is definitely an outlier. It is the only Viking theme we've ever had. We've had a few nods to it here and there, such as the rather recent Creator 3-in-1 Viking ship, but there's never been another theme fully dedicated to telling the story of Vikings. And the story that's taking place here is very simple. Vikings versus mythical beasts. And I think within that simplicity, there's a lot of room still for imagination and your own stories to develop. And we'll get to some of that later on. The first set on our Vikings adventure is 7015 Viking Warrior Challenges the Fenris Wolf. Get used to those long names because the rest of the sets have them too. It's kind of awesome. This thing has 700... 700? Okay, let's try that again. 76 pieces would have retailed for $5 here in the US and was released alongside four other Viking sets in August of 2005. This set is such a great introduction to the Vikings theme because right out the gate it shows you exactly what this theme is about and why it's so different. We gotta take a look first at the Viking minifigure. I was kind of surprised to learn that it was actually this theme that introduced the horn teeth elements for the first time. Another element that was new to the Vikings theme was that axe piece, of course, which still shows up occasionally even today. The minifigure here is kind of special in that he has a chest plate. Some of the other figures in the line have speckle black silver chest plates. This guy just has a regular black chest plate. Still makes him one of the more memorable Vikings minifigures. The broadsword here that the Viking is holding is actually the same one that was introduced with Knight's Kingdom in 2004. Our Viking warrior has this rather crazy looking bionicle shield to protect him from the attacks of the wolf. This really is a theme that tries to combine Technic, Bionicle, and System all together. And even the simplest of builds here feature Bionicle parts. It's kind of crazy. There's also two red gems in the set. Gems are the treasure that these Vikings are always after, and they tend to run into some mythical creatures along the way. The Fenris Wolf here is rather memorable in that it's one of the few non-dragon creatures that the Vikings go up against, and its construction is absolutely fascinating. Look at all the Bionicle parts, the back, the ball joints for the head. The head itself, I believe, is a new mold for Vikings, but it's interspersed with regular system elements like clips for the claws, the toothpiece for the ears, battle droid arms in black to fill out the legs, and then there's Technic elements too, like the bar for the eyes. Technic axle connectors holding the legs in place and the tail in place. That's one of the things that really makes this theme so unique. And this style is consistent throughout the other buildable creatures that we'll be seeing. This use of the varied systems allows for a lot of great motion to the ball joint, of course, in the head, gives you unlimited range there. And I should point out that there's a medium brown ball socket right there, which is kind of cool. Not too common of a color, especially in what would be considered a system set. The body can hinge in the middle, which is pretty sweet to get some pretty cool angles, and of course the use of the battle droid arms gives you lots of posability in the arms too, and the tail can wag as well. There's no play features beyond that, and I think that's okay for a $5 set. You know, inflation adjusted, that's about $7.50. And this is definitely something LEGO would charge at least $10 for today. And so Vikings in its time was actually pretty reasonably priced. This is pretty awesome. I remember keeping this wolf together for years. Uh, I put, <laughs> I gave it wings at some point too to make it some crazy vampire thing. It's fun. There's nothing quite like it, except all the other crazy creatures that we're about to take a look at. So let's move on to the next set. I'll be completely honest, set number 7016 Viking Boat Against the Wyvern Dragon is probably my favorite of the Vikings line. For 112 pieces, you would have paid $10 for this back in the day, figure an inflation adjusted price of about $15 now. That holds up pretty good because you get a lot of stuff here and it's a lot of great stuff. While we're still hot on the topic of brick built creatures, let's take a look at the dragon included here. There's a lot of dragons throughout the Vikings line and this is one of the smallest ones. And <laughs> 
You can see the similarities between this one and the wolf, right? It's pretty, pretty crazy, but I do like it, especially the colors here, the dark blue and the flame yellowish orange. That's pretty sweet. So the wings are made of a vinyl material that's kind of made a comeback in recent years in LEGO, and it's connected by fishing rods and 6.6 .6 stud long bars. And the wings can actually flap thanks to the rubber pieces that they're connected with to the main body. The head makes use of a rather interesting Technic claw piece, but honestly, it's pretty effective, especially at this scale. And then that brings us to the ship. The ship gives us two new Vikings minifigures with new torso and face prints. Well, one is angry police officer that if you were a city kid growing up, you saw hundreds of times. But the other face is a very iconic Vikings face. It looks fantastic. Both torsos are really great too. The ship though, is so well done. It's so clever. It takes two of those big wooden boat hulls and smashes them together to form a Viking longboat. In the middle, you've got the typical pirate mast done in reddish brown, and then a string element that kind of brings it all together. And usually I don't care for string <laughs> or tying anything in my Lego sets, but if it looks this good, I'm definitely okay with it. Another highlight here is the addition of four shields. Now these are stickered, but they look really cool. They can be easily removed and modified to be held by the Vikings too, which is pretty sweet. This time around, the Vikings are guarding four blue crystals. There's two easily visible on top, then there's two hidden underneath the mast that you really can't access at all unless you literally tear the ship apart. I guess they're safe down there. We also get these great Belleville oars done in dark green to help move the ship along. And then there's a regular standard minifigure oar used as a rudder in the back. This set is so perfect. It really is. With just literally a handful of parts here, this set so effectively recreates the look of an iconic Viking longboat, and I love it. Too many figures, a great adversary here, lots of fun parts, cool shields, great weapons, some treasure. And if you are looking to pick up a Viking set for yourself, this is the one I would recommend. All Viking sets are quite expensive even for a used copy you're going to be probably paying more than 50 dollars for this one but if you have to get one this is the one to get it's got everything you could possibly want and it looks great doing it and it's going to be a lot cheaper than some of the larger sets we're about to take a look at because trust me the prices only go up from here things get even bigger here with our next set 7017 viking catapult versus the nidhogg dragon this one has 225 pieces almost exactly double what the previous set had retailed for 20 dollars that's about 30 dollars in today's money has two minifigures and one pretty sweet looking dragon one of the vikings here is actually the same exact one that appeared in the last set but the other is kind of special featuring a new torso print and he has another one of those sticker shields which you can see six-year-old me did an incredible job of placing perfectly this time around the vikings are guarding a treasure of four yellow gems in what i believe is the only dark bluish gray chest to have ever existed the Vikings vehicle here is this wagon. The set's name might call this a catapult, but this is not what I would call a catapult. It's like a giant moving crossbow. And I think that's much cooler, but it would have made that set name even more ridiculously long. So I get why they went with catapult. It makes use of a function here that we're going to be seeing time and time again throughout the course of this video. The soccer spring-loaded piece fires these Technic missiles and it works pretty well. This back here is all for show, making it look more like a giant crossbow. Around the front, we have this beautiful printed big shield. This is something that'll show up throughout the Vikings line too, and there's actually three more designs that appear in other various sets. And there's a small platform on the back where you can place the chest to get away with the treasure. In total, there are three missiles that can be launched, which is plenty good but will it be enough to bring down this rather impressive looking dragon? Much like the other two fantastical creatures that we saw, this is a strange marriage of Technic, Bionicle, and System. The dragon makes use of a number of really cool new elements here, including the wings, of course, which are made up of dual injection molding, dark red and flame yellowish orange. They look really sweet and organic. There's also this fantastic new head mold for the dragon done here in dark red. And you can see, interestingly enough, that the bottom of the head is all brick built. And there's a hinged flame on the inside too. This system sub-assembly is connected through a Technic axle to the head, which is connected to the body through bionicle ball joints. It's so crazy. 
There were no rules for the designers when it came to making the creatures in this theme. And honestly, I think we're the better for it. We got something really unique and special. It is such a cool aesthetic. The use of these bionicle elements actually helped to give these creatures a more organic look. You see, in 2005, there weren't a lot of sloped and curved elements. It's a completely different story today where LEGO is constantly churning out new specialized curved pieces but there really wasn't that much to go off of in 2005. So bringing in Bionicle, which even though it had its very robotic look, there were some sets that had these very organically shaped pieces. Curves that just weren't possible at all to recreate with regular system elements. And much like the other two creatures, it gives these things a lot of posability with those ball joints. It's great stuff. That's this set here. That's not the last dragon we've seen and that's not the last wagon we'll be seeing either. But trust me, the later ones are just as awesome. That brings us to perhaps the most iconic Viking set. 7018 Viking Ship Challenges the Midgard Serpent. This set is actually so iconic, I was able to get the remake treatment through the LEGO Creator 3-in-1 line, which was pretty sweet, even going for about the exact same super long name. In total, the set has 578 pieces, retailed for $50, figure in an inflation-adjusted price of about $75, and it has six minifigures altogether. We've seen the parts for most all these minifigures before. There's a few things to highlight, though, such as the black-silver speckled chest plate here, and, most importantly, the inclusion of the Viking King. The Viking King is special because he gets a cape, a flat gold broadsword, and a golden Viking helmet. He looks pretty sweet. He's also got a new torso print too. Six Vikings is kind of the perfect number here, as that is the amount of ores that are available to be manned on this beautiful Viking ship. We'll get to the Viking ship in a second. Let's take a look at the monster they're up against, the Midgard Serpent. The Midgard Serpent, of course, is special in that it is one of the few non-dragon enemies that the Vikings are up against. This is interesting, too, as it's the most system-based of all the creatures. There's not as many Technic or Bionical elements. You can see here that there's a very specialized head that was developed specifically for this beautiful sea monster. He's got a red flipper for a tongue, which I think is perfect. And Bionicle fans will recognize this piece back here from some of the early Bionicle lines. I think that's pretty great. It is weirdly not connected very well though. It just kind of flops up and down. So as you're playing with it, his, his neck kind of becomes disconnected. Notice too that this is one of the sets that could have greatly benefited from the new Technic Friction half pin coming out, you know, 20 years earlier. There's a lot of these half pins holding various teeth in place and without friction, I mean, they just, they just fly all over the place. I'm guessing it's supposed to be like that, but but of course that just doesn't happen because of our lovely friend gravity. Oh, oh, floors me that it took him that long to make that piece, but I'm glad it exists. The fin pieces here, I believe, are from the rather unusual dino theme. That's an often forgot about dinosaur theme, which literally just had dinosaurs, and some of them were quite terrifying. But a few pieces seem to have survived from that era, and we'll be seeing some of those dinosaur feet show up in one of the later dragons too. The Serpent 2 has a lot of flexibility thanks to Galador locking joints, which allow you to get some pretty cool poses out of it. And the thing can stand up rather easily, which is fantastic. Looks like it's bursting out of the water to attack the Viking ship. And yes, <laughs> this ship. The highlights here, of course, well, First of all, is it's really impressive size. This thing is big. This is this is my face, you know? The, that sail is much bigger than my face. It's awesome. And it's a beautiful design. Probably the largest fabric element that LEGO has ever produced. I cannot think of anything bigger, except if they made, like, blankets, and those definitely don't count. Up on the front of the ship is another one of those dark red dragon heads, the same one featured in the Nidhogg dragon set. And then on the bottom, cleverly enough, is the wolf head done in dark red. And I think that makes for such a great face and you've got the black wings on the back. It's perfect, it's perfect. Working our way back, we have a very similar contraption to the one seen in the catapult from the Nidhogg dragon set, except this time we've got four bullets. Even the shield print in the front is the same. Down the sides of the boat, on each side we have three oars, 
two in dark green, and then one in reddish brown. And then we have all four variants of that printed shield element. In the middle of the ship, we get our refreshment station, complete with a rotisserie, which I think is hilarious and awesome. There's two pieces of chicken that you can rotate above the fire. Then we have a big keg here on the side. There's also room in the front for two stickered shields. There's a place to place axes in the middle, and then two additional swords right at the bottom of the mast. I don't know who it's intended for, rogue vikings or enemy vikings, but there is a cage included in the set in which you can imprison a single minifigure or, or more, I, I guess. But it's connected to a crank and, which can be moved up and then actually released down by moving up this lever, which is kind of nice. In the back of the ship, the Vikings are holding onto some treasure. This time around, we have three trans dark blue gems. Above that, a ladder leads up to a platform where the king shouts down commands for the Vikings to probably row faster. The ship is primarily built out of some large hull pieces, the same piece used for the front and back, and then three identical smaller 8x16 sections in the middle. It's an impressive model, making use of a lot of big pieces and becomes something really, really special and memorable. And there's a reason people remember this set even today. That's gonna bring us to the largest set of the Vikings line, and that is 7019 Viking Fortress against the Fafnir Dragon. This thing has an impressive 1,019 pieces. That's almost double the amount of the second largest set, the Viking ship. And surprisingly, it only retailed for $70 in the US. You're looking at an inflation adjusted price of about $110. Though this is the largest set of the line, it only features six minifigures, which is the same amount the set before had. Even though the set doesn't increase the amount of minifigures you get compared to the last one, I think the minifigures here are better because they are decked out. There's enough shields and weapons available in the set for at least every minifigure to have one thing in each hand. We get two of those lovely speckled black silver chest plates in here, which is great. And I love the shields, even though they are stickers, they look great and really round out these Vikings quite well. This is the second set to feature the Viking King. We get that gold and helmet again, which is awesome. And this time he features a red cape instead of a black cape like in the ship. This set includes two dragons, the mama dragon and the baby dragon. The baby dragon is a fascinating little build. There are some similarities to the wyvern from that small Viking boat, the second set we took a look at, including the familiar headpiece, very similar construction, but this time done in all black. Weirdly enough, this set is the only one to have ever included the half bush in black. There's two of them on this little dragon. And let me look it up. A used version of that half bush piece seems to go for about $10 on Bricklink, which is absolutely insane. I have to imagine at some point that will get recolored in black again, but for now, this dragon on his own is... <laughs> I'm sure those wings are worth a good chunk of money too. This dragon's very valuable. Then of course, there is the big Mama Fafnir dragon. The dragon's construction is very similar to the Nidhogg dragon from that $20 set earlier that we saw. This one is just made slightly larger. There are additional joints to make the wings go out a bit longer, an additional joint in the neck to make the neck longer, additional joints in the tail to make the tail longer, the body is a bit longer. And I do like the colors here a lot. We get those beautiful dual injection wings again in dark green green and dark red. It's a great combination. There's all sorts of these large teeth elements put into this dragon to make it look really sharp and menacing. The head construction is about the same, and we get a recolor of that dragon headpiece in dark green. That, of course, is exclusive to this set. The bionicle ball joints give this thing plenty of posability, and so it's fun to mess around with. You can probably make it stand on its hind legs pretty easily. There you go. That's pretty sweet. So those are our figures and dragons. Let's look at the bulk of this set, the fortress itself. It's made up primarily of a piece that would be familiar to LEGO veterans, the Fort LEGO Rado wall piece. It's textured to look like it's made from wooden logs, which I think is perfect for the look they're going here. It adds a lot of interest without using up a lot of pieces. And this structure is substantial. It, it is a big boy. It, it just surprises me that this was $70 back in the day. Figured 110 today for all this stuff. That's still a pretty good deal. Nothing like we'd see from LEGO today. I love the gate, especially. I think that's the best part of it. It's massive. It really has some height to it. It's quite impressive. It can be barricaded shut using this in the front, and the doors are great and plenty strong. I love the use of the teeth all over them, and of course, more of those beautiful printed shields. 
The gate is actually big enough to allow that first Viking catapult to easily fit through, which is pretty cool. You could store that away in the fort. There's nice decoration on the sides, including these large teeth, tail elements, more printed shields. There are three catapults, two identical ones. Both side modules, which can be disconnected, are actually identical in every way. They are just mirrored. And on each of those is a very simple medieval catapult that you've seen many times before. These catapults on the side launch light bluish gray player heads. Oh, geez, I built too much Minecraft. Minifigure heads. There we go. On the back is a much more impressive catapult. This one is primarily technic based. By pushing down on the very obvious red button, it's got a satisfying click too. It will launch these beautiful speckled colored boulders quite some distance. In order to preserve my boulders a little longer, I think I will refrain from doing so, but I have no doubt they, they could get launched pretty far. And that is guarding some treasure. This time around, we get four green crystals to guard. Now, the Vikings have foolishly decided to imprison the baby dragon for who knows what reason in this cage they have back here. And that's why they get attacked. The cage is pretty simple. It can be locked shut using this plate in front. The cage makes use of three of these gate elements. There's plenty of room for the baby dragon on the inside, which is nice. I'd almost expect with something like this that there would be a secret exit out the back where the dragon could blow apart the back and the wall would fall off, but there's really no surprises. You can only get in through the front door. And honestly, that's kind of all there is to the fortress. It's really straightforward. There is nothing going on in the interior besides that cage. And it's kind of disappointing. This was a perfect opportunity to give us a look into how these Vikings live. Where do they eat? Where do they sleep? And there's nothing. There's nothing in this interior at all. Lack of interior is kind of pretty common for this time. Think of Vladik's Dark Fortress, which doesn't have much going on or the castle of Morcia, which also had the same problem. There's just not a lot of small detail things that happened during this era. But you have to admit the outer structure is incredibly impressive, incredibly sizable. And if that was the compromise that had to be made to keep this at a certain price point, I can't complain too much about it because it is a massive, massive structure. And there's still a lot of fun to be had with this set, especially if you supplement it with the other Viking sets from the line. The fully enclosed aspect of it too is great. It really does feel like a proper fortress. And unsurprisingly, this is a very difficult set to get your hands on today, quite expensive. And honestly, if you're looking to get a Viking set, this is probably not one I would recommend. I don't think it's worth it. The dragons are great, don't get me wrong. The fortress is great, but even just that original $10 Viking boat versus the Wyvern dragon set, you get just as much Vikings joy out of that set for a fraction of the price. It's still ridiculously expensive though. This is the set that would finish out the 2005 wave of Viking sets, but there were a few other additional gear items like a wearable Viking costume helmet and sword. The first year of Vikings also gave us a chess set complete with 24 Vikings minifigures. Now from what I hear, the Vikings are actually glued together, which is really unfortunate because otherwise this would have made for an excellent battle pack. Regardless, the set is still very desirable as can be seen by the ridiculous prices that it demands on the aftermarket. But you gotta admit, the packaging for the thing is quite beautiful. Now allegedly, the Vikings theme was actually successful enough to warrant two additional unplanned for sets in 2006. And I'm so glad we got these two sets because they're both really, really fun. The first one here is Army of Vikings with Heavy Artillery Wagon. You'll notice that even though we don't have an adversary, some mythical beast to go up against in this set, you still get a plenty long name. And this is actually the Viking set with the most minifigures besides the chess set. I mean, they're glued. Do those even count? This set, answers the age-old question of how did the Vikings get all of these carts around? It's by pushing them manually, which I think is fantastic. So in total, this thing has 312 pieces, retailed for $30 back in 2006, and with an inflation-adjusted price, that's about $45 today. And yes, there are seven Viking minifigures in the set, including the Viking King, who's just along for the ride, of course. There's all sorts of those printed shields, plenty of weapons for the Vikings too, and the back of the wagon even features the quintessential loot. And interestingly enough, this is the only Viking set that I think actually has different colored gems. There's a green, light green, and blue gem in there. And they've also got some other treasure, the most important treasure of some sort of alcoholic beverage and golden chalices 
to drink it with. 2006 also gave us these big heavy duty specialized Viking wheels. Both of the 2006 sets do feature those. And then there's this one other really special part, which is this one by four printed tile with this very Nordic serpenty design. It is beautiful. Both 2006 sets also feature that tile. There's nothing new in the printing of the minifigures, it's still making use of the same parts mixed and matched to create new minifigures, and I think that's totally fine. Don't fix what ain't broken, and it makes these all the more amassable in my opinion. The highlight of this set though is the mechanism for firing off all sorts of these missiles. The set includes 10 missiles altogether, and it's actually a very automated process. Of course, we've seen the use of these spring-loaded soccer shooters before, but this has a crank to make them go. Watch this. That's efficient. All it is is this spinning crank that alternates left and right, back and forth. It's easy enough to turn and super satisfying. It is kind of surprising that there is no baby dragon or something to fight in this set, but I think it stands very well on its own. This set was made for fans of the existing Viking theme as a supplementary item to enhance their Viking army, and it does that very, very well. And like all the other Viking sets, if you want it, you're gonna pay dearly for it. 2006 gave us one last Viking set, and that's 7021 Viking Double Catapult versus Armored Offnir Dragon. The set has a total of 505 pieces, retailed for $40, retail adjusted $60 today, and has three Viking minifigures. This is the Vikings finale. And honestly, I think it's a really strong note to go off on. We get the biggest wagon of the line, paired with the biggest dragon of the line. And because I purchased it through BrickLink, I actually got the box and instructions, which are both pretty sweet. And interestingly enough, the box has some implications on the back. As you can see, there seems to be Viking on Viking combat, implying that there are different Viking factions in this world, which is pretty cool. It complicates things a little bit. There are Vikings, you know, almost how to train your dragon style, riding the Offnir dragon. There is, in fact, a saddle on the dragon, and you can see there are reins on it too. That's just some really interesting imagination generating creativity just shown by the back of the box art. I love that. There are a lot of different ways you could play out the story going on here. Are they trying to capture the dragon and tame it? Are they just trying to take the dragon down? Is one of these Vikings rogue, and is he the dragon rider and going against the other Vikings? Who knows? You get to decide. That's fantastic. Can you tell this set gets me excited? It's so cool looking. I mean, look at this dragon. I would argue that this dragon actually brings a fourth dimension into our Bionicle Technics system lineup, and that's brick-built characters. As you can see, it is armored out with none other than Knight's Kingdom action figures armor. It's got the Knight's Kingdom action figure feet here and those dino feet I was talking about earlier. It's got the shoulder pads guarding the neck and the back. Really interesting stuff. Something that really goes to show the size of this dragon is the fact that his jaw is made up of the standard Vikings dragon head here in dark blue. On the top is a rather unusual bionicle piece. And honestly, it works really well. We've got this huge flame coming out here too. It's all super impressive and terrifying. Much like the other large dragons we saw, we get those beautiful wing pieces again here in dark blue and flame yellowish orange, and we get smaller versions of them too in the back on the tail, which I think is really great. Much like the Midgard Serpent set, this is another one that could have used that friction half pin because it's got horns sticking out all over the place. The dragon has lovely short stubby arms too in addition to its wings. The proportions here I don't think are perfect. I think he's pretty long and pretty skinny. Uh, but honestly, it's quite forgivable given how much great stuff is going on here. Really crazy parts usage, the subtle shine of the silver elements, all the teeth and horns poking out everywhere, the colors. It is definitely a worthy final boss for our Vikings to face up against. And we do have three pretty well kitted out Vikings here. Two of them have the shields. And interestingly enough, we have the Viking King, but in the regular speckle black silver helmet. The wagon here, like I mentioned, is the biggest wagon of the bunch. And it does look plenty intimidating right from the front where you can see 
a silver dragon skull mounted. It also makes use of those beautiful 1x4 printed tiles that were introduced in 2006. And then there's these giant spears too. But of course, the highlight is the inclusion of these really sweet looking catapults. These things have some impressive reach. And because of the way it's constructed, it almost has a spring-like function as you overcome the tension of the bricks. And once you get it going, it really launches. It's pretty cool. I love that these counterweights are included too. Obviously in Lego form, they don't do anything. They don't weigh anything, but the extra movement that it gives and the implication of them being counterweights, I think is really clever. It works for me. Also, this is just satisfying to do. I know if I actually chucked one of these boulders, I would never see it again. So I'm not gonna do it because look at the, the power this thing has. This would probably be a little difficult to operate as a kid. You really gotta pull back to get these along, but it's sweet. One thing that's often overlooked in these vehicles is some method to actually get inside of them and control them. But there actually is a small ladder here on the side, which is great. And then on the other side, we have our little driving station, if you will. There's lots of great angles accomplished up front here too, by making use of simple hinges. And then these are hinged out too, which is great. Maybe a little bear in the middle could have used something to fill in this gap. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I feel like if it is Vikings versus dragon, the Vikings do stand a fair chance with this. If it's rogue, how to train your dragon, dragon Dragon riding Vikings versus some Vikings here might be a more interesting battle. That's the end of our Vikings journey with this set right here. What a fascinating theme this is. I keep saying it, but there's nothing else like this. There never was anything else like this theme. It really was an experiment. I've heard it said that this was meant to just be a filler wave while Knight's Kingdom died out and while Fantasy Era Castle was being developed. And I think that allowed the designers to just do whatever they wanted. This was just a line meant to warm shelves for a while in the medieval category, but it really took on a life of its own and has, because of it, become one of the most desirable medieval themes ever released by the company. And it's not hard to see why. Great minifigures, great parts, great monsters. There's a lot to love here. And it would have been awesome to have seen the theme go on a little bit longer. What other mythical creatures could we have had? I think there was a lot of potential in that category. Of course, they sell for something a little more recognizable with lots and lots of dragons. And I'm glad that for the most part, at least, we got a lot of unique dragons. We got three distinct sizes, the small, medium, and <laughs> uber large. But imagine what other creatures could have been. They really are a product of their era in 2005, 2006, when LEGO was going headfirst into this Bionicle thing and trying to blend system and Bionicle sets together. And I think this is one of the more successful attempts of it. Even though I'm not a Bionicle guy, I think that the elements produced in that line are very un-LEGO-like. You have to respect the imagination that went into creating these very convincing looking dragons using the Bionicle parts. But even beyond the Bionicle recolors, we got so many great parts in this line. The new horn teeth pieces that are still in production today, of course, come to mind. The helmets, the printed shields, the printed 1x4 tiles. The theme was great for its consistency, the ability to build up a massive Viking army, and it's just so memorable. Vikings 2 gave us probably the most fun ways to launch stuff at Dragons ever. And especially those last two bonus sets had some really creative functions to them, which I really appreciate. But there you go, that's LEGO Vikings. Did you own any of these sets growing up? Have you picked any of them up in recent years? Let me know. Honestly, I love them all. I still think my favorite is the Viking boat versus the Wyvern Dragon. It's just perfect, especially for its size. But the Armored Offnir Dragon is pretty, pretty sweet. Great colors, great parts. And the wagon that it's up against is pretty sweet too with those double catapults. And they work great. This theme is great for chucking stuff around. No doubt about it. Anyway, you have yourself a fantastic life. And I'll see you next time.